So, as a student, sir, this video is for chapter of four again metals and non-metal, and here we will be continuing in detail about the physical properties uh, that will be differentiating between how uh, metals are uh, differ uh, differing from your non-metals. So, uh, first of all, physical properties and chemical properties are two terms that you have to understand how they are actually different from each other. Chemical property is uh, by mean to say, uh, I mean to say. Something which depends upon the reactivity, how the reaction will occur, and physical properties are something like without having any sort of reaction, uh, by, uh, or you can say by merely by taking a look at them, then you'll be able to differentiate, right? So there are these are set of properties which are actually uh, which will be applicable for both, that is your metals and for your non-metals. So first in detail we'll be going for metals, how these properties exist for them. So the first property that we have is your physical state, and by physical state I mean to say how actually they are being formed or how actually they occur uh, in the nature. So as far as solids or metals are concerned, physical state uh, normally total of uh, total 92 uh, elements that we have, remaining are like 24 are metals and remaining are your metals. So most of the metals, it's like almost all the metals are basically in solid form, except for mercury, right? Which is the exception again I will say later, that it is the only metal which is found in liquid form. Then next comes your luster. And as far as luster is concerned, it means basically a shiny appearance that the metals will have. For example, if you would have seen uh, gold, silver, or iron, they have this uh, specific shiny property on them. So this uh, shininess is basically found in metals, mostly. Right? Next comes your hardness. So as we have seen, uh, like for the metals being your uh, solid in nature, they are quite hard. Right? You cannot, by hard I mean to say that they cannot be compressed, you cannot change the distance between the particles, right? Then moving on, malleability, again an important property. So malleability and ductility have to uh, be careful. So malleability is the property of uh, hitting the metal and drawing thin sheets. For example, you would have seen uh, aluminium foil in which you will be wrapping your uh, tiffin and uh, chapatis and all. And the gold foil uh, that are there uh, you can find on the top of the sweets and all. So because of this specific property that the metal when being uh, hit by any sort of hammer and all, instead of getting uh, broken down, they will be spreading into a particular area. Right? So the, uh, the property of metals being converted into thin sheets or hammering is called as malleability. Right? Uh, the next one is your ductility. Ductility basically means the ability of uh, metals uh, when being stressed, they can be drawn into thin wires. Right? And that is the reason that uh, normally the wires which are basically found right, in our household also, they are made up of metals only because they have this specific property of being stressed when they are heating. Right? Then comes your conduction. Now, conduction basically can be of two types, as you would have studied in your seventh standard. Uh, conduction, I mean to say, either the heat can be conducted or the electricity can be conducted. So, conduction in terms basically deals with two parameters that is your heat and uh, electricity. So, metals uh, have uh, given a green signal for both of them, that is your heat and electricity. Now comes the sonority, right? Uh, so, if, uh, for example, if you take a plate or a utensil in your house and you start hitting it with some other metal, you have this specific, uh, specific or peculiar type of ringing sound or the sound being extended. Or, uh, for example, when you go to a temple, you hit a temple bell, right? Then again, that specific type of sound is called as sonor sonorous property. And this sonority is a specific type of property which deals only with the metals only. Now, as far as the uh, second last property, there is a density. Density again basically nothing that uh, means uh, mass per unit volume. For example, uh, give this specific example if you take uh, two pieces, two blocks, one of iron and one of uh, wood, right, of same uh, same size, same shape, and the volume will be same exactly, but the weight will be more as for your iron as compared to your wood. So we can see the high density of iron is higher. So that metals they have basically very high density as compared to your non-metals. Now melting point, poly points you all would be aware of. Melting point is something when you start hitting. I think right it will be starting, uh, it will start getting melting, right? That is melting point at which specific temperature. Boiling point is again simple when you start uh, heating or when you start giving the heat to any substance, how it is being converted into vapors and all. So uh, the temperature, whether it may be melting point or the boiling point for your uh, metals, it will be extremely high, right? So these are the properties which were uh, there existing for the metals. Now how they vary for your non metals, that again we will see. Now uh, for non metals, as you saw, uh, like most of the metals are in solid form except for mercury. Uh, for non metals, we have generally around 22 non metals, and uh, out of that, also, uh, I think 10 are gases. Only uh, one is there, which is bromine, which is found in liquid form, right? Remaining are solids only, right? Next comes lustrous. So, except for your uh, iodine and your graphite, graphite is nothing but a form of carbon that we have seen in chapter your core and petroleum. 
uh, <coughs> is again a type of uh, non metal only but it has specific type of shininess on it right now as far as hardness is concerned yes uh, like i think 10 to 15 non metals are there which are quite hard but uh, their hardness is, is not as much as compared to as that of your solids now next comes your malleability and your ductility so uh, non metals uh, neither they are malleable and nor they are ductile means you cannot uh, hit the metal and the non metals and make them into thin sheets and neither you can uh, stretch them and make thin bars right as far as conduction is concerned so uh, non metals they are extremely poor conductors right or you can say a bad uh, bad conductors exception is there for graphite graphite is the only non metal which conducts electricity now okay sonority property is there so metals are generally you can say are non sonorous that is they don't have specific type of sound and again we think it's some density is very very less uh, except for the diamond the diamond being the again the one of the hardest substances uh, uh, that occurs on earth or planet again it is non metal but uh, it has the highest uh, density right that is again an exception now metal finding point and boiling point are very low as compared to that of non metals now these are the general properties that we have to understand with the same just your malleability ductility hardness finding point boiling point uh, sonorous and all right now uh, there are certain exceptions as we have discussed also and by exception i mean to say they will be uh, having a property which will be differing uh, differing from the other others also for example for well, iodine and graphite iodine and graphite as said non metals are non lustrous they don't have the shininess on them but these two again are having an exception they have a shininess property now uh, sodium and potassium as i said again the non metals have very low melting point and boiling point uh, very high boiling point and uh, high melting point and boiling point that actually applies only for the diamond but as far as sodium and potassium are concerned they are having extremely low boiling point now mercury as i said again is the only non metal uh, only metal which is found in liquid form now uh, graphite again all the non metals are basically poor conductors of electricity but as the graphite is concerned it is uh, basically used in motors generators also that means basically it is a good conductor now uh, metals we have seen they are extremely hard very having very high density but again aluminum being an exception is very light right that's it from this video